Hello everybody and welcome to our Build Your AutoCAD IQ session. Uh, we're glad to see a uh, few faces in the crowd who have uh, been here before and uh, some of the comments we're getting are enlightening <laughs> to say the least. This webinar, Back to Basics, Working with Layers Continued. It's going to be a great webinar. It's going to be presented by Naman Mysorewala, uh, an Autodesk expert elite who has joined us. Uh, if you've been here uh, in the past, he's joined us in answering questions and um, uh, also uh, providing additional details about things or steering us in the right direction if we're wrong. <laughs> that happens often enough. Um, Moderators today are going to be Victoria, myself, and possibly Sarah appearing later on. So she is helping a customer right now, uh, which is what we do here primarily. So first of all, a little bit about us. Uh, as I mentioned, Naman is an Autodesk expert elite. He is based out of Westchester, Cincinnati, and um, uh, very intelligent man who uh, he knows his stuff about AutoCAD and he's going to show you some very good stuff today. Victoria is our Autodesk Technical Support Specialist out of Manchester, New Hampshire, so my East Coast colleague and uh, yeah she kicks butt as you can tell from the picture with AutoCAD. So she will be answering questions in the chat window and I will join her as soon as the webinar gets started. Myself, Volker Coco, I'm also an Autodesk Technical Support Specialist. I'm based on the West Coast, Lake Oswego, Oregon. And Renee, there's winter. Okay, that's the best we're going to be able to do today. <laughs> I'm hearing some background noise there, so I'm not sure what's going on, but um, uh, I'll excuse myself for that right now. All right, so before we get started, for those who have been here, um, we all know that, uh, you know, leave your questions in the chat window. We'll answer those as we can and uh, review some of those after the presentation. The session, of course, will be recorded, as they all are. And the links for the recordings, as well as the uh, slide deck download and script download, uh, are available in a registration reminder that was sent to you previously. Uh, post-webinar survey and in the chat window and uh, you should have already seen those also in the uh, startup um, logo for uh, go to webinar and just to let you know if you're new we do have these uh, these are just some of the previous webinars that we've had in the past um, uh, last week we had uh, an AutoCAD specific one uh, which uh, Steve and Victoria presented uh, on 3D. And I believe we're at like webinar 45 now. And they're, it's just incredible. Uh, it's been a fun uh, trip down this road presenting these uh, webinars for everybody. You can find these on our YouTube channel in the Build Your AutoCAD IQ playlist of the AutoCAD Exchange. Uh, again, you can also find them on our landing page. All right, so uh, bef uh, one more thing before we begin here, and that's um, uh, we get a lot of people who uh, will do a support request uh, with a, and it's not really a problem. It's more of, um, hey, I'd like to see this in AutoCAD, or I'd like to see this changed in AutoCAD. Um, well, you can have that opportunity to influence um, what goes into AutoCAD, what needs to be changed. The product team is always looking for feedback. And one way to do this is to join the AutoCAD Customer Council. And this is where uh, the developers and uh, team, uh, product team managers take a look at what feedback you have to give about Autodesk, Autodesk products such as the AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT and, and verticals. Uh, so um, a very nice initiative to get even more feedback from our customers. So why participate? Good question. I'm glad you asked. Um, here 
once not only do you give it to give feedback, but you have access to uh, early builds of the application. If you're a real geek about AutoCAD like I am, I always participated in the beta program. And, and here you can see what the application is going to contain before it's released to the public. And you have the opportunity to provide input for those future releases and your feedback, as it states here, is addressed. Okay, so uh, if you have ideas or issues with what's happening, here you can voice your opinion. So how do we do this? Well, again, I'm glad you asked. You can email autocad.beta at autodesk.com or autocad.ltcouncil at autodesk.com to get invited to participate in this customer council. Again, this slide deck is going to be available for you to download. Um, and maybe Victoria could plop these two emails into the, uh, into the chat window and uh, get those out there ahead of time. All right. Uh, we do have a knowledge network, as it's called. And this is where you can find solutions such as downloads uh, for AutoCAD, LT, any of the verticals, free drawing viewers, as well as any of the hot fixes, service packs, and related downloads. Uh, you can find these on this AKN website. And I, if you haven't been there, I encourage you to go there and check it out. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of resources there. Uh, any, Anything from troubleshooting to getting started to installation to um, uh, uh, learning resources, so and even more. So uh, give it a go, check it out. I make use of it all the time, actually. Uh, anyway, on this week's agenda, Naman will be talking about layer tools. Now, we had a webinar previously about um, working with layers. We'll probably have one again in the future. But these are some of the tools that um, a lot of people may see the icon, but they're so busy with their work, they don't really have time to check them out. Uh, OK, cool command. I'll, I'll take a look at it a little later. Well, we're going to show them to you. Maybe if you haven't already used some of these, maybe uh, we can influence you to uh, be a little more productive uh, with the use of these tools. So we're now going to go ahead and, well, we'll get to the demo in a moment, actually. I'd like to run three quick polls here uh, that um, uh, just for feedback so that we can find out who you are and what applications you use and so forth. So first of all, I'm interested always in seeing how many people are new to our webinars. And in this case, um, right under 10% it uh, appears, um, or right around 10% it appears have been here before, and um, or excuse me, are new to the webinar. I'm reading this backwards. And uh, about 90 percent, yeah, 90 percent have been to previous webinars. I'm a little tongue-tied today, I guess. <laughs> so um, that is our first poll, and I do appreciate that input and give you a chance here to take a look at it. Now we'll go ahead, and I've got two more polls, like I said. For, uh, the second one is uh, which application to use. Uh, we've talked in the past about um, throwing some additional uh, webinars out there for some of the verticals, such as uh, you know architecture or plant 3D or civil 3D and such. So um, uh, we're getting closer to that point, but um, it's nice to see that most of you are using AutoCAD, 41%. About a little under 30% are using AutoCAD LT. You know, actually throw that up there for you. Um, we hope to go ahead and get some of those other webinars on some of the other applications out there. But in the meantime, we're glad that those folks using the core AutoCAD product, um, including LT, are here joining us. 
Uh, and keep in mind, anything we do here is going to be applicable to most of the verticals. Uh, some of the verticals have their own tools specific for a particular function, but uh, pretty much anything we do here, you can do in the verticals. All right, one more, and we'll get on to the demo. And this is really in reference to uh, the pre one of the previous slides. How many, if any of you, have joined that um, the um, customer council there? Six percent, seven percent. Um, probably should have had one up here asking if you've even heard of it before. I know it was uh, presented last week uh, in our slide deck, but um, hey, if you haven't done this and you're always wanting to give your input, this is your chance. You don't have to install or test the beta um, if, if um, you're um, invited to this council, um, but it's a great place to give that feedback. All right, so I am going to go ahead and hand this over to Naman and let him show you some stuff about the layer tools in AutoCAD. Hello everyone, this is Aman Mysorwala from uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, and um, wanted to uh, thank Roper and Autodesk to give me the opportunity to speak to you guys today. Uh, I was very excited to present this, and I've been very passionate about AutoCAD uh, for the longest time. Uh, I think I got started when I was 12 years old, so I've uh, been a little bit in a while before since I've been using AutoCAD. I'm an architect and um, I've been manager for GBB and Architects in Cincinnati. Um, and then uh, I also teach in university as well as um, an Autodesk Expert Elite as uh, Roper mentioned. And I'm also an Autodesk Education Expert uh, as uh, my affiliation with the university. And uh, I hang out to the community so you can get hold of me uh, via my uh, name, naman.demologist.mysorwala. Uh, that was a little about myself, but then um, I wanted to get forward and get into the real stuff, which is why we're here for the layers. Uh, and I've been very, very passionate about these layer tools when they were first introduced in Express tools. And uh, we used to have these small list routines that did uh, those similar functionalities, but the Express tools added uh, a notch above um, when it came to layer uh, management and or manipulation. Um, it, they used to be, we used to be able to write those risk routines, but uh, it, was, it would only work in our host file, but not through the Express or Blocks, uh, but the Express tools changed that. Uh, I forget when they incorporated these into the main product, but uh, this was incorporated in um, AutoCAD, uh, so it was available to AutoCAD LP as well. All the commands I'm going to mention today are available in AutoCAD LP, except one, uh, which is going to be a bonus command at the end. Uh, hopefully, I can get to that. Um, but before uh, I can do, but I just wanted to give you a quick heads up what this webinar was going to be about. It's basically about those neglected hidden gems that are under the layer panel. And the idea is to increase your productivity. And if, I don't know if you have uh, ever ventured um, in those before, but this is something that uh, I really enjoyed using. And I'll go over those um, as well. Now, in the previous sessions, uh, they covered what the layers are and uh, how to create layers and uh, how to modify layers and layer states, um, and as well as layer overrides. But uh, this time, I'm going to cover all these nifty tools that are available in the product. So before I get um, going, um, the first command that I'm going to be looking at um, is uh, called layer off, lay off, lay on. And I have this uh, uh, example loaded from basically if you go to open 
and it's uh, the A01 drawing in the sample set. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you how those uh, how the on-off commands work. Uh, this is this icon right here. So I'm going to turn off the layer. So it says layer five has been turned off, and if I click turn all layers on. This is a one-click thing. It just turns on all the layers that have been turned off in the drawing. So again, play off, turn off the layers, and hit the lay on command, and all the all the layers get turned on again. Excuse me, Naman. Yes. Yeah. Um. Can uh, we get a lot of uh, comments that the uh, sound isn't coming very clear? Uh, maybe get a little closer to your mic or turn up the volume for output oh, okay. if that's possible. Yep. Is that better uh, now? Well, uh, for me it's been good. So uh, oh, I'm okay. hoping we'll get good feedback here in the chat window. Um, thank you. Thanks. Sorry about that. I hope uh, this is better now. Um, so uh, the next um, command that I'm going to look at would be the the layer freeze and layer thaw. The layer freeze is the uh, the command uh, that I really really enjoyed using because it would work through Xref and uh, basically it allowed me to um, control which layers are on and off in the Xref. So if you notice that I have the drawing that ha is an Xref, so I can going to turn off or freeze the layer. So this is the command right here, the two icons says freeze. I'm going to click on the dimensions and uh, the dimensions get turned uh, frozen. Turned off the, the co column grid as well. Next I'm going to turn pull all of the layers on. So if I click this button right there, it basically paws all the layers that were frozen. Now I would recommend that you use this uh, command with a little bit uh, uh, hesitation here because it paws all the layers and you might uh, somebody might not be happy um, when you turn all the layers and save the drawing. These should be a very very sticky point in our office. Like who turned oh, who thought all the layers on? So the second uh, example of uh, the layer freeze and thaw would be in the viewport itself and that's where it really really shines where it is very contextual um, whereas in the other um, uh, model space it's uh, somewhat useful uh, the real shine it shines is in the paper space where you have multiple viewports and I'm going to uh, demo that to you so I have these two different viewports one is for level one and level two I'm going to just um, zoom into this area and use this lay freeze. If you notice that it shows me that I'm selecting the pink line in both the viewports. However, it only freezes that in the selected viewport. So the other um, option, um, if you look at the command line for this, and I'm, I'm a command line user just like Volker is. So if you look at the settings right here, if I type S for settings, you look at layer freeze, enter setting type for V for viewports, and it says freeze or VP freeze. So by default, it is VP freeze, and that's what I wanted. That's what, what allowed me to uh, select objects in one, view, one viewport and freeze it only in that viewport. So I'm going to switch back to where I was before. And if I go to, well, I'm in my model space back again. And I wanted to show you a couple other things uh, with that uh, layer freeze command. I am zooming into this uh, toilet area. And if I use this layer freeze command right here, 
I have options for settings right here. So if I hit settings, I'm going to click on block selection. What this allows you to do is how deep does this freeze command go? So if I click on block selection, notice that it says block, entity, and none. So by default, it's set to block. So turn off the layer of the block. So if I set to none, and I click on the toilet, notice the whole XREF got turned off in the host drawing because it is the first entity that you click on will get turned off. Next, I'm going to go to block selection. I'm going to undo that. Lay freeze again. Settings. Block selection. And entity. Now, if I click on this toilet, notice that in my command line it says, cannot freeze layer 0. It is the current layer. These objects, the block, inside the block, the entities were drawn on layer 0. So, hence, it is drilling down through the XREF, through the block, inside the XREF, and down all the way to the entity level, and that's why it can't freeze that. However, if I go to block selection, block, now if I click on the toilet, notice just the layer of the toilet got turned off, which is the level two. I'm going to turn off or freeze the layer for level one. Now it is going to this block level. So it becomes very powerful uh, command, then that has been my favorite command out of all the ones that I'm going to mention. The next command I'm going to talk about is the layer previous. Um, I'm not sure if you have uh, found it, but it is under, if you click on the chevron right here, it is this right, it says layer P, layer previous. If I click on that, what it does is it brings the last layer command, last layer state that I was working with. So it becomes a very nice feature set because then I can come in and freeze different layers here. And when I'm done, I can just go back and click on layer previous and bring it back to the state that I left it at. So hopefully if you do call all, you combine this with layer previous. Is the voice okay, Wilker, now? Yeah, um, a little bit of break up uh, in, at points, but for, uh, un we can understand you. Um, so oh. we're good to go. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the next uh, command I'm going to show, uh, which is the layer lock and layer unlock. Notice that I'm doing these in pairs. Uh, so layer lock and layer unlock are the commands that are available so if you want, you can lock the layers. So I'm going to just select the command, hover over the layer object, click on it, and lock it. Now once you have locked different layers, you can use unlock. Now the layer unlock is not unlock all of them. It works as it, you can select the object but I don't know which one is uh, locked or not locked. Now in the newer releases, it does uh, give you a indication where is this fading, that layer lock fading is available. Uh, so I can easily uh, tell which layers are locked and which layers are not locked, which is also part of this uh, dialog uh, tab. So now I hover over this. It also shows me the lock icon. If I am hovering over a non-locked layer, it does not show that lock icon. So once I'm hovering over the lock icon, I can click and unlock those objects easily. And then if I wanted to check this, the last line, it is not locked. So that's a pretty simple uh, command uh, that you can use. Uh, the next uh, command is the lay ISO and lay un ISO. You may have looked at the layer states uh, in the past. 
uh, session, but uh, this is an older command, but however, I uh, still use it uh, because it allows me to quickly uh, isolate the layers that I want to work with. Um, and the layer isolate and unisolate. So I'm typically a typer, but uh, you can uh, use the icons here as well. So lay iso and lay uniso is the command. So I'm going to click on some of the layers. And then press the Enter key. And now those layers are isolated. Now when I am done, I can quickly unisolate them. And I'm back to where I was before. Now you can do that, the restore with the layer previous, but uh, the lay ISO and uniso kind of work in uh, tangent together and allows you to quickly uh, isolate the layers that you want and then basically quickly re restore the, uh, the status right back. The other one uh, that I really, really enjoyed using was this command called layer walk. It basically allows me to see what entities are on what layer. So if you click on that chevron right here and click on this lay walk, notice by default everything is selected. I'm going to show the, draw, the layers in the host drawing. If you notice, those lines turn on. However, it also works on the XREF as well. So if you notice, I select these layers, I can isolate those layers, and I can see what objects are on which layer. And once I hit close, I am back to normal. Now, it works both ways, where if, you, if I do want to keep the setting the way it is, you, again, I'm going to issue this command, layer walk. And within the layer walk, I am going to select a few of those layers. And instead of hitting close with this button checked on, I am going to check that button right there. It's uncheck it, restore on exit, uncheck it, and then hit close. And it gives you the warning and click continue. And then it re keeps the setting that you had in the layer walk. I'm going to go back to where I was before using the layer previous. Any questions so far, uh, Broker? I think we're covering most of them. We'll probably go over some of them after the presentation, just um, to clarify. Okay. Uh, yeah. Doing a good job. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So the next uh, command I am going to look at is the layer de uh, delete. So I'm going to switch to my previous uh, view setting, which is called lay delete. And uh, this is a really powerful command where it will delete the entities on the layers. It will drill down through the blocks and delete the object and entities inside the blocks as well that are on those layers that you select. Uh, so I'm going to quickly uh, demo this on this title block. I know we won't use it for that in real life, but it kind of is obvious uh, in this demo what happens uh, when you do select those layers. Um, so I'm going to issue the command called laydel, or if you want, you can go to this icon based and enter that as well. So either way. Now, there are two options within this uh, tool. If you notice, it asks you to select objects on the layer to delete. So I can select an object, and it basically turns it off. However, you can also say N for name. So if you notice that right there, there is an option available called name. Now, instead of clicking on items, I'm, go, I'm able to select um, the layers that I want to delete. Notice it only shows you the base 
the host drawing layers, not the XREP or anything, because it, it's not contextual at that far. So I'm going to hit OK, and it says you are about to delete two layers, and some about that it will drill t down through those blocks and delete those objects. And now notice that the tile block is still there. However, those two layers that I selected, TV1 and TV2, for the text 1 and text 3 are gone. So I'm going to undo what I just did. So now the next command I'm going to work on, show you is the lay merge. Now that's another powerful command where it uh, is very, very powerful. Rather than deleting some of those layers, you may want to merge them. So all those ghost layers that you have in your drawings that show up somewhere and you cannot figure out for the life of you where those layers are being used, you can merge them into another layer. Let's say you have an A-demo and A-dem and A-demo1, A-demo2, those different layers that you want to get rid of and combine them into uh, one layer, which is a demo. In this case, I'm going to show you a different one. But um, So lay merge is the next command, L-A-Y-M-R-G. Again, it's the same uh, option. You can click on objects or click name. And I'm going to select, the, again, those two layers, text one and text three. Notice that the, the text, those objects are red because the layer is red. So it says layers to merge. So I'm selecting the two layers that I don't want in my drawing. Now it's going to ask me, what layer do you want to put it on? And I'm going to say, this the basically select object on target layer. Instead of clicking, I'm going to again type in N for name, and I'm going to combine it all on TB text 4 and click OK. And it says, that, again, they are in blocks. doesn't matter because it's going to take care of it for me. Now notice that those two layers are gone in my drawing. And I only have TB text 4 available to me. So it's a very powerful command and allows you to clean up those pesky layers that you can't purge out of their drawings. So let me undo that quickly. Now, there are other, uh, some other commands uh, that are miscellaneous layer commands that I've, I still use. Um, not as much, but uh, we always had those um, nifty list routines for those. So um, let me switch back to my model space. And I'm going to call all my layers, turn on all my layers so I, I can still see that. And uh, the first one is it basically sets the current layer of that of a selected object, which is called the lay M cur. So it says make current. And uh, my current layer at this point is layer 0. So I am going to click on this magenta line. And now notice that this lay 4 is my current layer. It's that simple of a command. So you're not sure what layer the ob uh, object is on. And uh, you want to keep drawing on, that la uh, on this layer. Make current. It's very quick to do that. So the next command is lay cur. The first one I did was lay m cur, make current. The other one is the lay cur, L-A-Y-C-U-R. What that does is it selects objects to be changed to the current layer. So let's say you have a layer current, and by mistake you drew some objects on, on the wrong layer. You can select those objects and convert them onto the current layer. Basically, it changes the layer. Rather than trying to figure out what layer it is or what not, all you got to do is just set that layer curve and move on. 
So I'm going to undo the command as well. And the next command that I'm going to look at is called the match layer. So what that does, it allows you to basically change the layer of a selected object to the match the destination layer. So if you have a few objects and you want to match it to the another object layer and you don't know which object, what layer that object is on, if you're not match layer is the command to use. Select the objects. Now it's going to ask you select the destination layer. So again, match layer. You match layer. Hit enter. Now it's asking me for the destination layer. And now basically it takes those objects and matches it to the, the destination layer of the object. Pretty simple command, but uh, can save you uh, some time trying to figure out what layer an object is on. You just kind of match it, basically. Now, the next command is called copy to layer. This is a combination, basically, of uh, a combination of layer match and a copy command. So I'm going to do copy to layer. That's this uh, button under the chevron. And I'm going to select those two objects for to copy. And then press the Enter key. And next, it is going to ask me which is the destination layer. You can pick the destination layer, just like the lay match, or you can click name as well and pick that based on that as well. So let's say I want to pick lay one as my destination layer. Now, once you have selected the objects you want to copy and the destination layer, now you have the opportunity to copy it. If I hit at the rate, it will make it make a copy right in the same spot. Or if I want, I can just use it as a copy command and give it a base point and a destination point. And basically, it's a lay match plus copy command together. Now, the other command that I wanted to uh, cover would be the bonus command that I talked about. Now, it is not available in the AutoCAD LT. However, it is um, uh, available in the main um, or any AutoCAD verticals that you can install Express Tools on. It is somewhat hidden under the blocks. So if I switch to Express Tools, it says List Properties. And it's well and good for the blocks, but it really, really helps me when I'm working with XREFs. And uh, I have no idea what layer an object is on unless I use the lay freeze command and click on it, and it tells me that. Or I can type in XList and then click on the object, and it tells me basically that this is on layer wall base, one arc plan dim. So it drilled through the XREF and then looked at what layer actually this object is on. And even it tells me the color and the line type of that object as well and what type of object it is. So this is the command right here, list properties. So again, plan sync by layer by layer, and it is drawn as a polyline. So it's a very powerful command that uh, allowed me to figure out quickly what layers um, objects are on. And with that, I mean, that is my uh, total length of uh, all the nifty tools that are kind of hidden inside the layer dialog box that uh, people sometimes don't use. Um, however, I would uh, invite you to uh, explore these. And they are, some of them are available in the main tab panel under the home, layers. Some of them are hidden 
under the layer itself. So with that, I hope I did well. I had some vocal moments, I guess, but uh, <laughs> you guys are going to be the judge. <laughs> nice little jab there, uh, Naman. Um, <laughs> It's all good. Uh, it was a great, uh, we had a lot of great questions too, and um, we will go ahead and um, cover some of those uh, in a few moments and answer some that we didn't get to uh, in our um, presentation. So, um, can everybody see, uh, can you guys see my uh, slide deck here? Let's see, I may be showing the wrong screen, actually. Yes, I am. Not a good one at all. All right, good. All right, so um, first of all, uh, thanks for that demo. It was great. We do have uh, in this PowerPoint slide, uh, we always try to include some additional resources. And in this case here, uh, basically a link to each and every one of these commands. So you don't have to uh, just type it into your help file or anything like that, just uh, check it out. Uh, it does have um, uh, steps as to how to work with these commands, um, although I think it's always better and from the feedback, uh, it seems most of you agree, it's nice to have a live demo of these tools and um, uh, I know a lot of people think, believe that they know it all. Uh, uh, and maybe everybody did know everything about these commands, but even the tiniest things that you may not have known, one little thing, could help make your day a little more productive. So, um, we do have some coming attractions. Um, a couple of these actually are still, we're in the works. What should we show next? And um, uh, we will have that updated by the next webinar at the latest, but uh, hey, next week we're going to have some navigation tools and not, um, how to use some of the navigation tools in AutoCAD. Uh, that'll be a great one. That's going to be uh, Victoria and Sarah Emsley presenting that. And uh, two weeks after that, another 3D webinar. I have a couple more slides, but I do want to, uh, before I even get into those, I, I do want to throw one more poll out there. And then after that, I'll do the uh, slides, uh, finish up with the slides, and we'll do our Q&A. So the question I have for you is, did you learn anything new in this session? And um, looks like uh, the majority of you did. And um, well, for those who didn't, um, you know, we we really always hate wasting uh, people's times. I I hope um, maybe uh, you were at least able to recall a command that you hadn't thought about in a while. And um, uh, in order to, you know, a lot of times we just know so much that we actually forget some of the stuff that is available. So just um, briefly share that there. And um, as you can see, quite a few of you have learned something. So uh, we are happy to hear that. All right, so let me um, finish up with the uh, slides here so we can get to the Q&A. Uh, just to create uh, some of the stuff I brought up uh, at the beginning of the webinar. We do have a landing page where you can sign up for the webinars or have uh, co-workers that you know of who might be interested uh, in these webinars sign up. And uh, it does list our schedule. Obviously, this one shown here in the image is a little outdated. But here you can also view the previous recordings of our webinars. Um, we will have, um, we're going to answer your questions, but you can also leave the questions on this landing page, uh, posting it on the feedback post. And obviously that's also, all these links are also in your uh, uh, survey and the reminders that we send about upcoming webinars. 
if you do leave feedback, uh, you can do so for this webinar. Uh, ideas for future webinars. We had a couple in the chat window. We're going to be hitting some of those topics uh, coming up. Uh, if you want to email us, do so. Uh, feel free to, really. But be sure, please, 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 in the subject line, put Build Your AutoCAD IQ. We have not only the Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinars, but we have them for robotics, we have them for installation and licensing, and many other webinars. So um, in order for this to come to us, uh, put that in the subject line, and um, we'll know what team uh, should be answering that. So uh, Naman, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to you as a presenter real quick like here. Uh, oh, okay, great. In case we have some questions that need to be reviewed on the uh, screen, I saw some that says layer merge command was uh, one of them. Uh, right. Do you want to repeat that? Okay. Well, then um, let us see that again. Okay. So layer merge uh, allows me to merge multiple layers onto a single layer. Um, it is a very powerful command and allows you to kind of get rid of those pesky layers that you see in the drawings that you can't purge them out. So the command is hidden in under this chevron. And the la second last button, it says lay MRG. So lay merge, and it says select object on layer to merge. So I can select the objects using my a mouse, or I can type in N for name, or I can click on this name at the bottom. I learned that from Woker the other day. And let's say I want to combine this text 1, text 3, and text 4 all in text 4 layer. So I select the two that I don't want first, so it's layers 2 merge. So I select 1 and 3. Now it's asking me what is the destination layer. Again, I can click N for name. And now I am going to select TB text 4 as my destination la layer or target layer, as they call it, and click OK. And it's saying that, hey, these layer text 1 and text 3 uh, layers are embedded inside some block. I don't know what block it is in, but it is embedded in the block. And I, it will basically drill through those blocks and get rid of those layers and convert them to TB text 4. And I'm going to say yes. And now notice that everything turned cyan, because now those two layers are gone. And now they are merged onto text 4. So it's a very good way to get rid of those pesky layers that you never purge. Anything other questions? I'm sorry. I just realized I was on mute. <laughs> um, so one of the questions uh, was, would, would, do these tools work in just AutoCAD LT or AutoCAD, especially the Express tools, do those work in AutoCAD LT? Okay, so the Express tools by themselves do not work in AutoCAD LT. However, the 99% of the commands that I showed you, except the X list, work in AutoCAD LT because it was uh, incorporated into the main core product. So they are available in LT as well as in AutoCAD verticals. Great. Yeah, so a lot you know over over the years um so a little history here about the express tools and we will have a uh, a webinar on that upcoming one of our guys really wants to present on those uh, is that um they were introduced back in release 14 uh you know before the turn of the century as what were called a bonus pack. And uh, at, yeah, LT had just come out around that time, but all of these tools were basically 
done using AutoLisp, which is not supported in AutoCAD LT. And what has happened is that some of these tools, which are um, um, uh, so popular, they've gone ahead and recoded them, rebuilt them basically, and made them part of the core application. Not all of them, but a lot of the popular ones. So you're seeing more and more of it, them being incorporated into AutoCAD LT, which also means they're available in all applications. Um, you know, we mentioned the um, customer council uh, earlier prior to the presentation. If you want to see some of this stuff as being part of LT or, or um, um, uh, part of the core product, you know, this is one of those reasons you'd want to join something like the customer council so you can give feedback like that. It, it's going to sound hokey, but the voice of the customer is powerful. Okay, I mean, we can give these ideas to our product team, but they're going to listen to you guys, okay? Um, they're going to listen to you, and um, they'll take our advice, but they'll listen to you <laughs> more so than us. That, I, it's just a great way to get it across. They, I can't guarantee they're going to get everything in. They can't guarantee it, but um, the more requests they get, uh, the more uh, better. <laughs> the more better. Uh, the chances of it getting implemented. Uh, let's see. When I I have a question here. Um, uh, can you maybe expand a little bit on on um, freezing a viewport layer? Oh, okay. uh, I, I know it's I know it's a little off topic, and if need be, I could do it. But um, we get a lot of questions about. Um, uh, so one of them is, uh, you know, uh, what exactly does it do? How does it affect my other views or model space? And if I select a thaw all, how come it, you know, it, it's still frozen type of thing? I know it's ad lib nom nomin, but um, I'll take is... it. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, so uh, so what does I saw a question? What the off versus freeze is? So let me start with that. One, the off basically turns it off from the screen. The freeze basically takes it out of the memory. Basically, it doesn't get um, computed by any of the hash commands, and so the freeze is the kind of more appropriate way of uh, getting um, not showing a, a layer. So with that said, the problem happens is if you are in model space and you freeze a layer, that layer is frozen everywhere. So if I, let's say if I freeze these two dimensions and I go back to my paper space, if I can go back to my paper space, oh, I'm in the command, that's why. Uh, go to paper space, notice that layer is frozen completely out of the drawing. The problem happens is, well, I do want to be able to see it in my paper space viewport and not in my other viewport. So I have two sets of uh, dimensions. So I'm going to use my layer previous command uh, to bring back where I was before. Now switch to my model space. And if you notice that when I look at my layers, there is this third option. It says freeze or thaw in current viewport. So what that does and allows you to do is freeze certain layers just in that viewport. So if I go to uh, try to find the dimensions, uh, let's see, dims, arc, plan dim, notice that it is frozen in the left viewport. I'm going to turn it on, and now notice that I have this hodgepodge mess. Well, I need to turn off that layer, which is the works, which is for the second floor. So I need to turn that off. So I'm going to use this lay freeze tool again, and then click on this, and now notice that that dimensions, all the dimensions are gone that are on the other floor. However, in my model space, those two dimension sets are still shown. 
and it's not completely gone from this. Now, this also works uh, in paper space too. So let's let me draw a couple lines. So if I draw a few lines here, sorry, Walker, I'm just ad libbing. <laughs> hey, that's uh, how I do it. <laughs> uh, so uh, my current layer is lake three, so I'm going to do it in the paper space. Um, and I'm going to draw them in my viewports. So what I can do is if I am in this context of paper space, notice that none of the viewports are active, and I do this lay freeze. Oh, duh, it's the current layer, genius. Uh, so lay freeze. Awkward moment. Awkward moment right there. <laughs> right there, if you notice that, well, it froze all in all of the viewports. However, the day freeze doesn't accommodate that, but if I go in and I select this layer, freeze layer, layer in, the lay, in the paper space, now notice it's not visible in paper space. However, it is still visible in the two viewports. So that I did not a, know that. I just ran into this a few months ago where I was like doing something. I was like, oh, <laughs> you can freeze it in the paper space by itself as well. That's a great example there, yeah. uh, Naman. So if you have um, multiple layouts, um, you can have something from a title block frozen in one of the title, uh, one of the layout versus the other. I don't know, one of the examples like that. That, yeah, that, uh, that actually an excellent example. So we have about uh, three minutes left, um, and maybe you can briefly go over these um, two. Uh, one, um, maybe show the X list uh, real quick again. Um, and then we also have a question that's been asked a couple times, uh, what the difference is between merge layer and match layer. Oh, okay. So yeah. quickly, XList, I'm just going to type XList. Again, it is not available in uh, LT. So then, and it is available only if you have installed Express Tools. If you have not installed Express Tools, it is not available in the regular AutoCAD as well. So all it does is basically it allows you to list the, the type of object, what layer the object is on, and the color and the line type of that uh, object itself. So if I type in repeat X list, I click on this window marker tag. It says it's a block, wall base window, wall base to our plan text. It's on those layers. The last one was uh, lay match layer versus layer merge. Match layer allows you to basically match a layer from one object to another. So let's say if I want to switch this object onto the, the layer of this first object. All I do is I click match layer, I select the object that I want to match, hit enter, and next I'm going to select the destination layer, which is this guy, and now notice all the ones that I selected are matching the layer of the destination object. And the merge basically allows you to basically completely get rid of the layer itself and merge layers into a single layer. Does that answer the question? That was great. Really appreciate that. Hey, we're um, we are running out of time, everybody. Um, so we are going to have to say goodbye. <laughs> It was really great having everybody here today. N uh, it was great having you do this presentation. Uh, looks like a lot of people uh, got a lot out of this. So uh, uh, thank you very much. And thank you, everybody, for your time. We know it's valuable, uh, so we do try to um, make it worth your while. We hope to see you next week as we navigate throughout AutoCAD uh, with Victoria and Sarah. So everybody be safe. Take care.